I was doing an Indian accent for Never Have I Ever when I got this audition. And the Minnesota accent is obviously totally different, but there are some certain sounds that are a little bit similar. So I don't know if anybody else will notice it, but I feel like when I'm watching Fargo, I can hear my Indian accent sometimes. Hi, Risha. It's so nice to speak with you after the end of Never Have I Ever, in which you were also amazing. Um, (laughs) uh, So I'm really enjoying this season of Fargo so far. Obviously, I think anyone who is anyone would want to be in Fargo. But how did you end up in Minnesota? I had never seen Fargo when I got the audition. Didn't know really anything. I mean, I knew about it from everything I'd heard about it, but I'd never seen it. Never seen the movie, never seen the show. Um, But I knew that uh, it was such a successful um, world and and had won so many awards and so many of my friends were such big fans of the show. It's just personally in the past, I should say, was never really my genre. Mm. But once I got the audition and and watched the movie and watched the show and fell in love pretty much immediately, if anything, it just expanded my own understanding of myself and the type of content I like to consume because I didn't think in the past I would have watched a show like that. And now I'm a huge fan. And, um, you know, I, once I got the role, it, I did a lot of work on the accent and I guess that's how I ended up in the world. I was going to ask you about the accent because you fell right into it. So obviously, uh, <laughs> you are a master. Was it hard to perfect at first or what was Not your way of doing really, it? Really, to be honest, the accent came pretty naturally to me. Um, I had never heard it before and I was like, what is a Minnesota accent? But my whole life, I've I've been somebody who loves to copy accents and imitate accents, and not all of them come very easily to me. But for some reason, this one did. Um, maybe it was just meant to be. I don't know. Maybe I was Minnesotan in a past life. But uh, also, I was doing an Indian accent for Never Have I Ever when I got this audition. And the Minnesota accent is obviously totally different, but there are some certain sounds that are a little bit similar. So... I don't know if anybody else will notice it, but I feel like when I'm watching Fargo, I can hear my Indian accent sometimes. So Noah Hawley is a genius, um, but what is he like as a colleague? What is the back and forth like when it comes to creating Indira for you? He is so cool. I mean, he's, yes, he's a genius. And he's also someone who walks around set with a baseball and just like throwing a baseball in the air. Like he just keeps it so calm and cool, which makes everybody around him feel calm and cool. Um, But he was immensely helpful to me in creating this character. And, you know, before we started shooting, we had many conversations on Zoom before we were in the same town. And he even came to LA to meet me and uh, answered every question I had because I had many questions. (laughs) And um, was also just so open to my ideas and asking me for my ideas, which I so appreciated. And, you know, he, he was there directing the first block Um, But even after that, he made himself available if anything came up. You mentioned how this kind of opened up a new door to content that you're interested in. I feel the same way because I'm like, oh, crime. I'm not into it. I'm not really a crime person, but. The humor, the humor in Fargo. Exactly. It's so specific. It's so unique. And your character, especially, you still have this like family element to it. Yes. You see, you know, you're trying to keep your uh, man child together while also wanting to help a uh, dot uh, with hers. Can you talk about that dynamic? I really love you and it Juno is. playing off each other. Yeah, it was very fun to have that other plot happening with the marriage and the financial debt that Indira is under, because then you see her as a full human being, not just a cop on the job trying to save this woman, but why does she do what she does? And why is she the person that she is? I think getting to see her home life and her personal life is so interesting, not just to play, but to see as an audience, I think. And, um, you know, totally different from the previous female cops that we've seen on Fargo, whether it was the movie or the show. And that's why, uh, and obviously the fact that she's the first South Asian mm-hmm. and woman of color to play a, one of the leading cops. Mm-hmm. I was you know just it was it was such an honor i imagine it's also great to get to play off of uh jennifer jason lee mama lines yes. and i love that you really hold your own in those moments what is that experience wow, thank like? you for saying that because um you know it's working it's like the olympics getting to work with these people actors olympics i should say mm-hmm. um i learned so much from working with every single actor on set Uh, Jennifer Jason Lee included and she's also so cool and we became really good friends 
And that's just something I didn't expect. So speaking of like the cop element, you and Lamorne Morris have these like fun interactions throughout as you're trying to crack this case. Uh, What is the energy of that? Like, like the noir element for you? And how do you do you guys like have like improv on set? Or like, how is it that you get the energy going? No, we didn't really improv on set, did we? I don't remember now. (laughs) Maybe we I don't think we improv on set. Honestly, it's all in the writing. I mean, the energy really comes from the writing and the story and what's happening and just the way these characters are written. Um, yeah, I don't I don't know if I'm answering your question. But I, for me, it's just all about the writing and mm-hmm. obviously the work that, you know, I did to pr- prepare for the role and working with Noah and, um, you know, getting to do a ride along with a cop and understanding that world a little better. That was really what I guess, gave me that energy. You did a ride along with a cop. Did you mm-hmm. find, was there, was there anything that was most uh, surprising to you or that you just never really thought about beforehand? Yeah. That you to incorporate? I mean, I had never spent any time with a cop in my entire life, let alone like being on a shift and being in the car with a cop. Um, and specifically with a female cop in Calgary. And I happened to get to be with her on a very busy shift, which was in the middle of the day, which I was not expecting. And a lot of crazy things happened during that shift. And I was just so um, amazed, amazed by how cool she was. What I mean by cool is just how composed she was, despite the chaos that she was dealing with. I was freaking out next to her, but she was totally calm. And so I just pretended to be calm too. Um, and, 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 you know, just observing her and observing her interactions with the people that the, the calls that she was responding to and um, asking her a million questions was immensely helpful to me in building up this character. So mm-hmm. now that you you have opened opened the door slightly into this new genre, are we going to be seeing you in, you know, some crazy thrillers coming up? <laughs> What's next for you? Yeah, I hope so. <laughs> I, I love thrillers and this definitely did expand my appreciation for mm-hmm. different genres. So yeah, I, I I always want to, as an actor, be able to do things that push the envelope and expand uh, the narrative when it comes to South Asian representation specifically. So let's see. Wonderful. Thank you so much. Thank you. <laughs> you have, um, yeah, I, I love you in both this and Never Have I Ever. So oh I'm very gosh, excited for you. Thank you so much. I look forward to seeing you much more. <laughs> nice to see you. Bye. Have a great day.